But we all love our robot overlords, don't we, gentlemen? Welcome um, back, Craig. Not according to... Uh, I think you need to be reported to the Ministry of Democracy for supporting the Automatons. Uh, to We Were Gamers, episode 396. Uh, this is a pro-democracy podcast, as we've previously discussed. I don't know, uh, that sounded suspect. I was going to say in, a, in the most non-political sense. I mean, I don't know. I think politically we're, pro- we're also pro-democracy, so I think that's fair to say. That is fair uh, to say. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Andrew alluding to the fact that uh, in Helldivers there's been a big uh, robot campaign ongoing recently. Uh, seems like it hasn't gone that hot necessarily, though. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty dicey fighting them things. I don't know. They're really, I don't, I, they're not supposed to be that much harder than playing against the bugs, but they sure feel like it. Yeah, I agree with you. I've had some successful missions against them more recently, but like it doesn't, I don't ever feel good, you know? I don't know if we need different weapons. Maybe we're just not high enough level to have the good anti bot weapons, but it feels yeah, like it we do. Be. But when we run into things like tanks and towers and berserkers and, and you're just like, I don't have five different weapons to accommodate for all these enemies. Like I can yeah. auto cannon like, the berserkers, but then I'm dead to the tank. I can right. EAT the tank, but then I'm dead to the tower or the berserkers. It's, yeah. There's a lot that, of um, rock, paper, scissors that's not happening on the bot side that is on the bug side, right? Yeah, yeah, total agreement there. It really feels like you really need a diversified squad in order to overcome uh, the robots, and it's uh, you're only playing with a couple people. That's really tough. I think, though, yeah, you, you're probably right. It's probably more of a four-man situation where you really need the full squad and one on autocannon, one on anti-material, one on EAT. Uh, EMP probably is good. I don't know, stun some people. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it's 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 a weird one for sure. I really like that the game's popularity has not significantly waned, however, it is still killing it. I've really been enjoying the way the the dev team is rolling out changes, uh, by basically pushing out updates and then not telling anyone. And then people come in to report weird new stuff, and the devs basically saying you're lying, you're a propagandist for the bugs, or you're <laughs> you're on the side of the robots. Like, don't believe these lies. Uh, and then people posting pictures of like flying bugs, and them being like, "This is, I can't believe you would do this. Are you like who, whose side are you on?" <laughs> I have seen the floating blue things. I'm just saying. Andy, what? Come on, man! Floating blue things. What are you talking about again? <laughs> are you on the side of, you know, the robots here? That's so undemocratic of you to say that, you know. <laughs> and it is exactly oh, that. Yeah, it so. is. It absolutely is. It's very good. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, they don't seem to be slowing down, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a high overhead game. Although I hope they don't run out of things to do soon. I guess they really are starting to make us feel like, yeah, we're really getting ahead here. We're starting to win. You know. The, uh, the blue mm-hmm. thing people think are hinting at a third race of enemies. Um, yeah. So that's that's bad news yeah. for Super Earth. I'll just say. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's cool. You know, uh, excited to see how that goes. Um, it's been a heck of a week for you guys over there. Oh man, I'm so tired. <laughs> it uh, it caught up with me earlier than it used to, Andy. It caught up with me on Saturday. I I went pretty light. Uh, we're talking about Bottle Logic had their return of their anniversary party, which is a week long beerathon. Uh, I, I caught up with you early. How? Uh, normally I think during a week of Logic, it would get to to be about Friday night, and I would start to be like, oh. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been coming here and drinking beer every day this week, and I mm-hmm. I think I felt it about Wednesday this week this year. <laughs> I felt the logistical part of that, where it was like I just don't have time to be here more than an hour max every day. Um, yeah, and then the last day was after WonderCon, which in was the, up in Anaheim, in also the rain. <laughs> yeah, in the pouring rain. 
and yet somehow we ended up with like two hours to be there and as my wife put it beers just kept appearing like they do <laughs> but uh i think you could say how that happened hat tip to bottle logic for putting on a great event and constantly having to pivot and uh and doing it pretty well they did all right it's unfortunate that their outdoor area is um what is that dg is that the type of dirt that that is um which is partial clay sand mixture which does not do well with high amounts of rain yeah it's it's great in the california sunshine but it it can absorb water through to the base layer, but once that soaks up, it just becomes wet. Yeah, uh, so it was a little puddly, but we made it through. Another year complete. And, uh, really cool for a place that's ten years old to be like, "Hey, what if we brewed some old beers that people don't remember?" Yeah, they brought back some good stuff. They also brought back weird stuff like Anaheim chili pepper beer. Yeah, I passed on that one this time around. I did too. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was mm. just going to say, I don't believe that either of you drank that, and no, I was correct. <laughs> seven years ago, me reminded me of today that I shouldn't bother. Yeah. There were, there were better offerings. There were, Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of the new stuff was bomb diggity, as they said in 2001. JJ, they did... Uh, <laughs> They did a series of hard seltzers. If you can hear the air quotes, they were okay. technically hard seltzer, but all of them were between 16 and a half and 22 percent. Mm. And so they, they were really it, they're hard seltzers in method, but malt liquor effectively. <laughs> well, <in reality. laughs> they had brewed them in different spirit barrels in order to have each one of them. Uh, be reminiscent of a specific cocktail. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, and it, it, they actually pulled it off really well. Very cool. Yeah, they calling it lightning in a bottle. It's, um, they had some kick to them. That's for real. Well, 16% is quite a bit higher than your average beer, so. Yep. I mean, there was yeah, one even, for, there even like for them, right? So 20 plus percent as well. Uh, and that is stretching the beer definition, I would say. Yeah. Hey, Very it's cool. all about how you brew it, right? Yeah, it sounds like it was pretty great. You guys were, at least from the parts that I could see, uh, enjoying it. So I was impressed. I was very impressed for having taken that much time off and the climate and the climate and the climate, you know? We should, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they had a successful on our end event, I think, overall. It was a little bit jankier than I think everyone expected, but it wasn't janky in a bad way. No, they managed to keep uh, I think they managed to keep most of that behind the curtain. So literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking of people who are bad at keeping things behind the curtain. Uh, we just got to get all the real life stuff out of the way. Andy, uh, F1. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> all it's it always the have, car. Yeah. It, all it took to have an exciting race was the championship leader's car to explode and catch on fire. You know so what's easy. funny about that? It's, it's two things are funny about that. One, nine races in a row, Michael. Max Verstappen has won. Nine. It has to be more than that, right? No, no, no. Nine in a row because this was going to be his 10th. Oh, okay. Book ending both races. The winner is Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz in a Ferrari. Uh, currently, Carlos Sainz, the bookender of Max Verstappen's nine race run, has no seat for next year because <laughs> getting ousted for Lewis Hamilton, who hasn't seen a podium since 2022 yeah hey, he was nowhere in 2023 and barely there last year so oh man and so 
even though it was a race race, Carlos got way out ahead also. And it was kind of like still wasn't a race for first. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The front wasn't the competitive part. The interesting stuff was in the middle and the back. And uh, there was competition in there, huh? Uh, Yeah. And not a lot of crash outs. So, you know. I, even if Max runs away with it another year, which unless his brakes explode again every week, yeah, <laughs> every week. <laughs> Michael, you should you should look up the video of this. Uh, look up Max Verstappen brakes rear brake or something like that. Um, he he's like doing pretty well, but he seems to just have the car just seems to not be moving the way he's anticipating so he's slowing down in the corners a little bit more and not getting away from the straights as fast and there's like smoke and he's still pushing he's still racing for first place until he gives up and he's just like something's wrong here and i don't know what it is uh and then you hear him say fire 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 as as they're like okay like you know bring it in we're gonna check it out or what you know whatever then he's like fire 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 and the like rear of his car like explodes in flames <laughs> yeah i'm uh, i'm watching a clip here yeah yeah the re- right rear wheel and everything else shoots like a shotgun into the pit wall if he'd been 15 seconds earlier it would have gone into the garages yeah Ooh. it's like if he if he had held out a little bit longer it would have been shooting towards people like that's the crazy part yeah wow yeah, the thing just turned into a grenade as it hit like a thousand degrees or whatever, because it had clamped down on the wheel that was still turning. At you know, had an F one motor turning it, so pretty crazy. I don't know how that kind of failure happens without some sort of backup being able to unlock that brake. Yeah, it, it's weird though because you know brakes are one of those safety kinds of items that if you fail, you want them to fail closed because otherwise the risk is the car can't be stopped and that's dangerous mm. too. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. But it's an F one car and the motor is insanely powerful, so you can just overpower the brakes, right? Like, <laughs> so then you get crazy conditions like this, right, where they're racing and maybe they don't realize it's happened, and then you know. yeah, pretty pretty yeah. amazing. Uh... I don't know if if um, that I mean they see they had one or two problems with his car last year and then all of a sudden ironed it out and he never lost again basically, right? And you uh, know it, maybe it will be that 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 happens again, you know, or maybe we're just going to be treated to the Max Verstappen's dad and Fernando Alonso show for the entire year <laughs> of people you know causing drama and complaining about their teams and threatening to go other places like you know i'm watching drive to survive and the fernando alonso show right now versus the fernando alonso uh buddy buddy with lawrence stroll laurent stroll uh back and forth but back then where he's like oh we're best friends i've known him for 10 years he needs to blah 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 and it's like what happened they were bad (laughs) that's what happened (laughs) they were buddies the last year when they were very good and they thought they'd be better and this year they have been worse that's what's happened yeah. right it's weird to me like how did you make a worse car just stick with the same thing it's yeah it's one of those like uh equal improvements right like everyone else improved and you didn't improve more than them and so everyone caught up and now you're worse right mm-hmm. that's the the theory i mean look what happened to alpine right they're they're technically faster than they were last year but they're so much worse <laughs> Right, they're Alpine. Not. Alpine is headed for Williams territory. They're going to be back at the back. Oh, they, speaking they of Williams, are. Speaking of Williams, how funny is this, Michael? You crash your car. Your team doesn't bring an extra, and they can't fix uh, it before the race. Hold on, hold on. It's not that they just didn't bring an extra. They didn't have extras to bring. Oh, that feels bad. Okay. Yeah. What what do you think your weekend's supposed to look like after that? Grabbing a cocktail at the bar, watching the race on TV like everybody else. That seems how about, what I would think. <laughs> how how about if you just made your teammate do that and you took his car? Ooh. <laughs> Brutal. Sucks to, be, sucks to be low man on the totem pole. Right? Brutal. Brutal. Capital B brutal. 
And not only that, you had the announcers making fun of that decision live on air. Ooh. And yet, the team was right, maybe? Turns out. Like, Logan Sargent wouldn't have gotten 12th, right? Yeah. Probably not. I still didn't get any points out of it, but they had a chance, right? At least he didn't crash it again. Right. You got to imagine he crashes that again, and the team is like, you're both fired. <laughs> like, we have no cars now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to survive. There's been interesting talk from the, the Williams team about, like, why their situation is so dire. And you, I don't know how much of it you've heard, but, like, basically they were saying the entire team was managed in a giant Excel spreadsheet effectively. <laughs> well, yeah, they got bought by uh, Venture Capital. Well, this was before that, though, right? Oh. And they kept that going. And this new oh no, team, yes. And this new team boss has come in and says, "This is insane. It stops." And this is the year where the pain has come, mm. uh, because they can't just use the use the old spreadsheet anymore. Now they're trying to make them do new stuff, and you know it's a the transition process. So, you know, it it sounds good, but also you can still, you know, <laughs> you gotta yeah. have a car to race the races. Yeah. Well, uh, F1 has been a real interesting time, I'll say, this year. Uh, I hope we get some more uh, good races like this past week. Um, we'll see. I mean, uh, Japan is always wet this time of year, so we'll see if it uh, it continues to be. Yeah, I mean, heck, it's been wet around here, right, guys? Yeah. Ooh, hey, yeah. how? Uh, speaking of the wet, Andy, are you playing baseball in the rain? Uh, I, I, you know, what's funny that that is I've turned into a full on assistant coach. I had to get background checked and fingerprinted and all that sort of stuff, uh, for softball. But the answer to that is no, <laughs> it's a lot of that, a lot of that yeah. getting canceled. Uh, we don't have the MLB level facilities to drag tarps over the fields, um, drain them off, dry them out, you know, all that sort of stuff to get the fields ready the next day. So. There's been a decent amount of um, cancellations and reschedulings. But you're enjoying your role as coach? I, I like not being the main coach. I like being like the, the guy that's like there to help hitters with their swing or whatever. Like the main coach is running the practice, and I'm just sort of standing behind the shortstop slash third base and telling them, okay, you know, there's a runner on second. So when she throws it through... This this runner is going to come to third. You need to cover that kind of. It's like really either easy mm -hmm. stuff. I don't want to be the main coach. Definitely not. And that sounds like a job, effectively. I mean, the, our main coach is doing a great job and making it look easy, but I know it's not easy. Uh, so, you know, just give me the give me the easy things to do. I, it's good though. It's nice. Yeah, um, you know. Let's see what the coaches uh, for the Dodgers do. Yeah. What what do you, what do you guys do? What do, you can't bench your star, but if it had been anybody else, yeah, would they you still have a contract. They, I was gonna say you gotta think they wouldn't. At the very least, they wouldn't be seeing the field. I'm sort of surprised that uh, we're talking about uh, folks who aren't aware of the Shohei Otani gambling scandal. Um, Whatever it is, I don't know. Scandal is even the right word. Thing, perfuffle. I mean, yeah. I think it's probably a scandal, right? Like, yeah. there's it certainly a would be a scandal. Chance, there's a decent chance that whether or not he had intentions to gamble, he did break the rules about I, sending money places, and then double backed on that. Even I was going to say, if he wasn't who he is, wouldn't he have been suspended by the commissioner by now? Even if just for, you know, while an investigation, yeah, or or like, you know, just give him 10 weeks and then everything will, you know, be figured out. And if he has to go to court, that's his problem or whatever. Right. Right. Like, I am sort of shocked the commissioner hasn't come out and said anything about it or done anything. I'm, you know, and the Dodgers are big money and they can't just like, you know, fire one of the most famous faces of the sport at this point. But it's like if the, if this was just some dude they would have hung him and put his head on a spike, right? Well, like, 
it's it's still a risk too right because right now there's a there's him sort of being on the right side of this and the i didn't really know what was going on but if it comes out that he was more involved than he claims and the dodgers let him play that's that has the potential to blow up in their face i i mean you know you want to believe that he's not lying intentionally you do Um, you do right and and innocent until proven guilty of course but you know you ruin that that veneer when you change your story like five minutes into the story coming out right <laughs> it doesn't look good and whether it's misunderstanding or whatever who knows right but right. certainly all kinds of weird layers of stuff right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 interpreter interpreter. is misrepresenting things you know exactly. as though it's coming from him but it's actually yeah. not and like that Could kind be. of stuff that's yeah a lot Crazy. of weird um a lot of weird facets to that story you, you you have to imagine there's some stuff going on in the background we're not hearing about Oh, ab- yeah, one hundred percent. Like I, I know I'm the fairly IRS confident. is now going after that bookie. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say that bookie is going to jail, and I'm fairly confident this interpreter is going to jail <laughs> for financial crimes, if nothing else. Right? That seems sure. like that's that yeah. feels like that's happening. Yeah, but yeah, wild, wild. It's right, like you that, know the with the cl- such close association between gambling and like all the other major sports. <laughs> Baseball yeah. has been blissfully clean of gambling iconography all over the place. Um, and yet, <laughs> here we are, right? I mean, shoot, yeah. this was the stuff they they blackballed Pete Rose for and stuff back in, you know. Black Sox, yeah. The Black Sox, right? So I was like, I was shocked the commissioner didn't just come out and be like, you know, unacceptable or whatever, right? But Yeah, you'd think. I mean, I feel like if this was the NFL, they would they would have hung him already, right? Like they're that kind of league. But baseball be different. Yeah, it's all about the contract size. Yeah, his 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 numbers are a lot bigger than <laughs> anything that's going on in those other leagues. Also, too, so maybe if he was on the Angels, still, right? Like he, he's on the Dodgers. Yeah, they're the, the Dodgers have like their own legal department, effectively, right? And well, but the they're Angels also don't. quote unquote yeah. contending, so it would be bad for all of baseball, not just the Dodgers. Right. Versus Says Angels, who? I think it would right? be great for me personally. So I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, it would be more. But yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. It's like, you know, why they're never going to, you know, go after the Yankees or whatever for the same reason. Right. Yeah. Even though the Yankees Crazy. didn't contend much last year. So I don't know what that means. Hey, since we're talking about MLB, uh, it's not in the MLB yet, but have you guys been that now that the season has started, there's a lot of videos coming out about the uh, ABS automated ball strike system. I think, Michael, I started talking with you about this. I, I've heard people talk about this in the past, but uh, I haven't seen it. Uh... Was I talking with you about this or was I was I talking to Wooly about this? Uh, it might have been Wooly. OK. Uh, I was talking with someone and nuts about this. <laughs> it's the um, it's kind of like a laser system for automated balls and strikes. It creates a a strike zone for each batter, and they're they're working on it to basically take balls and strikes out of the umpires' hands. I'm surprised the umpires would allow that. I mean, they're working on it. I don't know. Yeah. What I really, I I would love at some point for you guys to watch some videos of this because I have an opinion about it that is not entirely positive. Oh, I, I mean, I think my my opinion is instantly negative. You don't even have to ask me to watch a video. The whole point oh. of ba- of baseballs and having umpires and refs in any sport is for people to get mad at them. Like the having the human officiate it is part of the game and it's an integral and important part of the game replacing it with a have... robot to try and legislate out the rules of the game is insane and stupid thinking the whole point is that some umpires are bad and that like the strike zone is according to these rules and the umpire calls it how they see that's that's the game it's like you can't I... always like legislate exactly 6.32 inches above this it like that's that's no, that's not one, the game. One one point four five. You're the problem, Andy. There is a number. And it's one point four five. You're the problem. 
no, I'm not because I actually tend to agree with you, but I know there are a lot of people that feel exactly the opposite that like home plate umpires ruin the but, game because they what, make bad calls. Yes. Sure. But, but yes, that's the game. The fact that they ruin the game is the game. The human, the human factor of it all, right? Yeah. It's just like, oh, you want to watch the people make these amazing plays, diving for balls and making these heroic throws and stuff like that. The umpire is the same thing. I think my like, main that ball was an it. inch outside. You should have swung, bro. Like, there's right. the chance well, the umpire would have called it. Yeah. Well, so that's my main problem. You just said it out loud. Is like this system is laser accurate, right? And so there's a there's a laser line, and like a soccer ball, if the the tiniest bit grazes the strike zone, so they pause it, and you'll see an umpire has called a ball. The catcher can currently in I think it's in AAA and in Atlantic League and wherever else they're using this. I think they tested it at the Futures game last year. You get two challenges per per game per per catcher so like each team gets two the umpire can be 98.7 percent correct the ball is outstride the strike zone but because it's a laser and the ball grazes the laser that's now a strike yeah and i want to i i am i'm supportive of the fact that someone would say well it grazed the line that should count right a pitch I that, don't that so. touches the line uh, but guess what? It makes the, the could have said the same thing, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with the definition of the umpire. Like, umpires call balls stuff that's inside the strike zone and the opposite all the time. Yeah, it's, it's okay. No well, it's funny because it's actually going to make the strike zone, like you said, 1.45 inches bigger than an umpire would. Yeah, because the ball – well, but that's not true though, right? I think there are umpires who if they think the, the side of the ball is crossing, they'll still call it a strike. Yeah, maybe. It yeah. just depends on the guy, right? And there are definitely some of those guys who people know and it's known ahead of time that their strike zones are a little wider. Yeah, you're playing, you're playing whatever, the ump, right? Yeah, yeah and you, you play the ump too. You have a scouting report on them just like all the batters you're facing as a pitcher, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's all analytics and they all know this stuff. I don't think this is a hard problem. Just play the game. You know the ump calls it low outside and says those are strikes. Swing more. There you go. <laughs> right. Also, if you're worried about... Like, or don't, right? If you're worried yeah. about like a, a hair of the ball grazing the, the laser grid and tripping it as a strike, shrink the size of the grid by the width of the laser. Problem solved, right? Now you're just back to what it was before. Yeah, well, that's currently not how they're doing it. It's, it's my, main, my main issue. Right. My issue is it's stupid to have the laser in the first place. Just let the dude call it. It's part of the fun. And yes, the, uh, the, I say that as having been screwed royally by umps every season. <laughs> like it happens. I was watching a game when, last night or two nights ago. Two nights ago, maybe. Lower third, middle of the plate. Ball. Mm -hmm. The umpires, or both of the broadcasters are like, What? <laughs> Like, I've never heard both of them just both look at each other and go, what? Like, it, they're like, was it, did, did we miss it? Did we blink? Did we not see him call it? And then the next pitch, you know, like low and a little outside. And it's like, oh, that's a strike. And it's like, that doesn't make up for there's, what you just did, Mr. Umpire. There's, <laughs> like, that's there's not, the makeup call. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely been some umpires uh, in softball. Luckily, we don't have a coach or any of the coaches or dads on our team that are really like, oh, come on, come on, this terrible call at, you know, eight years old or whatever. Um, but there was, we've already run into one or two where it's like, they're at least consistent with their, I can't believe that's a strike. <laughs> and that's all you need. Like, right? ah, like, okay, you need I mean, he's called more it. than you need them to be yeah. dead on the, on the strike yeah. zone. Yeah, he's it, called it there all game. And it is what it is, right? Like, if the ump is inconsistent, that's annoying but also part of the game. Right. You know, and especially at the, you know, the level you're at, like these people are just volunteers, like lay off. Come on, people like that's double insane to me. Like a kid's softball game. Like they're worrying about balls and strikes, <laughs> bro. Is that near the plate? You should be happy. <laughs> I agree. All right. I, it, that's baseball, the endless world of fun. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the season welcome yeah. back it, it is the new season now so 
All right. Uh, speaking of welcoming back, Michael, welcome back to, I don't know, what was the name of that world? Did they ever say? I don't know if they named it. Welcome back to the jungle? I guess, yeah. Welcome back to the jungle. Uh, Earth that will be, let's call it. Yeah, there you go. Ugh, that's hmm. <laughs> based on what happens in that first one. That's depressing. <laughs> it's depressing. Uh, yeah. So Horizon Forbidden West came out on PC. Uh, I have been eagerly anticipating this one, and it did not disappoint. Awesome. So you're playing the PC work? version? Did you? You yeah, played that's it first. The first day. Question. Did it work? Uh, so I played it. I didn't play it first day, but I did play it before the first patch. Um, and Did I didn't, work? I put in, I, I, I put in about two hours, two hours and change and it seemed fine for me. We, we updated our NVIDIA drivers and everything was cool or whatever. Uh, so it was actually, it was, it tells you, Hey, you're launching the game for the first time. You should go out and get the latest NVIDIA drivers for the best experience. And I was like, Oh, thanks for the reminder. Let me go do that. Tap in my head. The smart meme right there. Yeah. Actually, I'm uh, kind of surprised more games don't do that. Yeah, you would think they would. It, it seems like such an easy thing to do for them to be able to to go out and look and say, hey, this is going to be the latest patch that involves our game. Let's just put a little n reminder in here for people. Yeah, that would be smart. So you played it for a few hours. How was it? Played it for a few hours. Uh, it was um, it was great. It was, you know, exactly what I, I wanted it to be, getting right back into it, uh, realizing that my uh, my co the combat is just as good. My combat skills have atrophied a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, it like any game, it, it sort of eases you back into it. That's good. They give you a tutorial to re-remember how we play this. Well, they... Yes and no. They actually do a really good job of weaving the tutorial, which is kind of those first two hours, into the story. So it feels much more organic than a, oh, here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. Like there are story reasons for why you are going through all of the basics again. Oh, that's good. Yeah, um, so yeah, that's feels, always one of those very things natural. that makes no sense. Like Spider-Man lost his powers. Yeah, so she I, there's an explanation of why she's lost her equipment, and then she gives she gives a friend their first focus, and so the story the first part of the story is her teaching them how to use their focus. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Yeah. So it works. It works as your refresher as the story is teaching him. Very cool. Yeah, so it's uh, it's been good. I killed a giant snake. Yeah, new machine. That's the machine coolest stuff snake. in that game. Uh, I dropped a space shuttle on two other snakes. What? 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they hook you early in this one. You you summon a space shuttle and throw it at them, or no, like you, you climb up. A, there is a, a a failed space launch uh, shuttle still sitting on a pad held. Uh, held very precariously by a couple of ropes and you climb up the scaffolding and drop the uh, drop the shuttle on these two snakes that are in your way. Man, some engineer, meanwhile, is crying. <laughs> <laughs> My hard work, no. Which I guess it already was ruined anyway, so whatever, right? If, if they had worked a little harder, maybe the shuttle would have worked. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, very cool. But, so, you you said something about more games should do this. Uh, one thing that I did notice, and I, I can't remember having seen this in other games, and I don't know if it's a new Steam thing, or I don't know if maybe Horizon Forbidden West just did it themselves, um, but there are achievement counters. So every time you do something that progresses an achievement, so say the... Stealth kill 20 robots achievement. Every time you stealth kill one, you get a little toast pop up in the corner that keeps count of where you are. Oh, welcome to MMOs, buddy. I've seen other Steam games do that. It's like a game by game thing. Some some of them implement it, some don't. Okay. For something like this, for a game like this, where there are, you know, 70 different achievements, do this, do that. It is kind of nice to to have it pop up every time I do the required thing and not have to keep tabbing out to the achievements menu if i want to check 
I wish I Helldivers do. would do that for my personal orders when I need to kill 400 robots. Yeah, I do appreciate when games have that tracking for you so that you're like, I, okay. I, I appreciate if it's there, but I also want to be able to turn it off because a lot of games I don't care. Sure. Yep. Yeah, it, it must be possible in Steam to disable those those pop-ups. So if you don't want them, yeah, you Steam can do toast, it. But you can turn off Steam Toast, static. no problem. Yeah. yeah, But definitely, if you do that, you also won't get when the achievements pop either. So, you know. Yeah, some people don't care about that stuff either. Right. This is fine. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Does it run on... Look real good. It looks very good. Yes, they yeah. uh, they released the specs um, a couple of weeks before the game itself came out, and I don't have <laughs> um, souped up as my machine might be. I don't have the recommended minimum specs for running it with everything dialed all the way up. What it, it, uh, yeah, that thirty eighty's got to be getting some frames though. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm still on the uh, they they have a chart that's minimum recommended high and very high. And I am I am between high and very high with the 3080. I bet the very high, though, is 4K, right? Are you, you have a 4K it's, monitor? I don't. I don't. It's 4K at 60 FPS. I bet that's, you can turn great. it down to 1080 and then set everything else to very high and probably be fine. Yes. Yeah, I probably could. I'd have 1080 to is a, 1080 is a lot that. less than 4K. It's a lot like it's a quarter. <laughs> I mean, the all those new 40 series cards. If you run anything at 1080, they're all getting CPU bottlenecked at this point. Yeah. So I I suspect you could uh, in, induce a similar type scenario with your 3080. So. But it uh, it you know it looks very pretty. Nice. Uh. All right. Uh, well, from I know so rare to talk about video games. Um, <laughs> uh, just letting people know, I did eventually beat Infinite Wealth. Uh, I got to the end of that and and said my goodbyes uh, there. So that was bittersweet. Uh, great game. Really enjoyed that. But not a lot to say about it other than what we've already heard, folks. I'm sure there's um, another one right around the corner. I mean. I feel like they did two in two years. Let's give them some time. You know, <laughs> I, I'm not telling them to hurry. I'm just saying I feel like there's always another one of those right around the corner. They're certainly working on them. I'm confident of that. Uh, but that hasn't been the thing that's been gripping the nation, Andrew. Is it the nation or is it just you and me? No, it's the nation. I've decided. <laughs> well, uh, it better be Michael. It better be Michael soon because he's got an announcement. Yeah, Michael. Oh, what? 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 Mm-hmm. Who? What? Well, tell me what it is first. You need to install Bellatro, Michael. You need to install Bellatro, bro. Come and on. you know what you need to install it on. On uh, my shiny new Steam Deck. Ooh. I know, it's tempting. It's way more tempting now. Uh, it plays really well on the Steam Deck. I use the D-pad. The main problem I've been having on the Steam Deck with Bellatro... You can use the touchscreen, though, right? I mean, it has a touchscreen. Uh, you can use the touchscreen. The main problem I've been having is actually brushing the um, the touch pads are so sensitive that it it creates a mouse on the screen, and then I gotta deal with the fact that there's now a mouse on the screen. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the game has so many different control schemes that it it's able to be controlled multiple different ways, and it's kind of like a little bit actually annoying. <laughs> but my fingers have finally memorized like when to press X versus Y, which is kind of fun. Andy, how many runs have you beaten Bellatro? Are you keeping count? Or is it several? Or is it a few? Do, do they keep count anywhere for you? I think all? so. I think you can go to a stats page. Oh, where's the stats page? That's what I need. Um, you have this open during the podcast? Bro, come on. Attention. No. What are we doing? No, no. <laughs> okay, look. I've beaten it with the red deck, the blue deck, the yellow deck, the green deck. That's all the decks I've beaten it with. Okay. And uh, I've only, once I've beaten the game with a deck, I haven't played with it again. So I guess that okay, means I've only okay. one, two, three, four, four times. For some reason, the green deck is the one that has clicked the most with me. I'm on like the third or fourth stake uh, now up. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know why. Uh, we should explain what stakes are. So 
uh, it's basically difficulty, a, like difficulty, yeah. but there's a chip color for that instead of it being like light, medium, hard. Uh, so I've only ever done white steak on anything. Yeah, so I think I'm on black steak now on, with the green deck, and uh, the green deck's the whole thing is like the way it earns money is a little different than the other ones. The green deck is by far the easiest time that I had. Uh, the first game I played the green deck, I won. Yeah, uh, but I'll go ahead and tell you, man, on these higher stakes, it's pretty rough. Uh, they they start changing the rules a little bit as you go up in the stakes. The first one is oh. like, oh, okay, the small blind now doesn't give you money for beating it anymore. I don't... Uh, you can you can get money like you know via extra hands or any effects or whatever, but there's just no reward for just clearing the level. There's no. I'm having a hard enough time trying to beat the game on normal stake. I don't. I mean, like the black deck. The um. I found the black one pretty tough. Also, the 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 banded deck where there are no face cards. Like, yeah, you, you really have to play different with those ones. It, the the crazy decks that unlock like the, the abandoned one, the uh, checkered one, uh, the checkered one is all spades and di- uh, all spades and diamonds, I think. Mm-hmm. So it, it basically just has two of every of those and and no hearts and no clubs. Yeah. Uh, there's a deck that starts you with a bunch of vouchers. Um, there's Ooh. a deck that like gives you bonus jokers, like you have extra jokers but one less consumable slot or something like that. Uh huh. It, 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 just a bunch of crazy ones, basically, <laughs> and you really have to play different using those decks, like especially the abandoned one that doesn't have any face cards. Um, I I kind of feel like some of the decks are really dependent on you beating the game and unlocking more jokers. I've only you, unlocked you like to... thirteen out of one hundred and fifty jokers. Yeah, I, I will say I've unlocked a lot of them now, not all of them, because some of them are just insanely rare. Um, it, or they have like weird conditions that I just happen haven't happened to fulfill. Yeah. Like, I think there's one that's that you have to hit a million points in a single hand, and I just haven't done that yet. Um, no, there's, yeah, there's no way. I don't know. Maybe I've done it. I don't remember. Yeah. It, it's weird. It, but it definitely requires you to play different. Um, so I was going to poll you here, Andy, and I want to, uh, know if you have a favorite deck and a favorite Joker in favorite Blocker deck. Run so far. Favorite deck is probably between green. I actually really like the abandoned deck because the idea behind it of like, I really want to do something with it, but I haven't been able to make it work. And that's a problem of jokers that I don't quite understand is how do I make the ones I want appear more often? Because there are some out there that's like make all cards. That re-roll cards. Button. <laughs> yeah, well, the reroll button costs a lot of money. Yeah. Doesn't everything in life? Yeah, that's but that's actually the answer. Like, you know, build your economy such that you can afford to re-roll more often. That's really the only yeah. answer. Yeah, I just don't feel like I have enough time to build an economy before the game is at stage eight. Mm. It, I will say uh, one of the things you learn, or at least I have learned, is that actually sometimes playing stages, even though you would get a better benefit by skipping them, can be worth it because the you can like it run your money up more. Even if you think you're not going to buy anything, like don't skip, just take the money. Like, you know, because you will need that money later as you get towards stages seven and eight. And also, especially with a lot of those jokers that increase as you play hands or as you do things in specific, you want the most chances to increase those you can. Like, I had a run, um, probably brings up my favorite joker, or at least my, my most warmly thought of. <laughs> uh, the, the pants. Have you seen that one, Andy? The pants? No, I don't think so. I think I think that's the name. It's a pair of pants, and the, the, each of the legs are two different colors, so it's like a blue leg and an orange leg or whatever. Okay. And the pants are about two pairs. Because <laughs> like they took pairs. two pairs of pants and stitched them together is what it kind of looks like. Okay. Okay. And so it's a it it increase it it increases the molt on a two pair by the number of times you've played a two pair. Yeah, there's a lot of those that are like rare to get and they're very good, but the problem with those is you I need the a, other ones that are, yeah. that are two pair. Yeah, so then the, the issue is then you also need to like, you know, have two pairs and planets, you need to have some other stuff that increases your molt in other ways because this by itself won't be enough. But right. if you get it early, the, Does the a, way to juice it is to just intentionally play the worst two pairs possible so you don't win. 
play maximum hands intentionally lose money right by mm-hmm. playing hands over and over even though it won't let you win so that you can juice the multiplier on this thing so that later you can win right and then you'll have like crazy multipliers by the time you get to you know anti seven and eight yeah well that's like the ones where you play a planet and you get an extra point one molt forever right right um i i molt seems to be good but like i have a question for you about chips versus molt so like mm-hmm. sometimes there's like play every time you play if, or each played face card gets plus 30 chips or each card in a straight gets plus 10 chips and then you have the ones that are molt also so like 10 chips per card is actually pretty good because both sides of multiplication should go up not just one side right yes so the issue is that scaling the chip side is harder than scaling the multiplier side just because of the jokers that exist or at least the, that i've seen i haven't uh-huh. seen one that makes it really easy for you to make the number of chips you get every round go up well the the one of my favorite jokers actually is the hitchhiker or hiker which mm-hmm, every time mm-hmm. you play a card it gets plus plus four chips permanently yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the That's pretty good the problem is most of the chip adding jokers just add flats amounts of chips Mm -hmm. And when you start getting into very big numbers, a flat amount of chips, even multiplied by a large number of things, isn't worth it compared to just multiplying by more things more. Right? This is a, like, uh, geometric math problem. Mm -hmm. If we remember those words (laughs) from our our days in university or something. Um, and, And the growing rate on the multiplier side is faster. So, but but if you can't get to the point where that growing rate matters, you will just lose. So early on, the the flat numbers are really helpful. Like adding, you know, every time you get a a straight, you add a hundred chips. Early on, that's awesome. Well, I definitely had a time when I had the bull and I had three hundred dollars, and so that gave me six hundred chips. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> but also, also, I like the bull. Yeah, it's a good one. You got to get it early, though. Yeah. Or, well, or at least a lot pl- of But the, the problem I have is I really want to play a deck where every card's a face card, but also every card gives you times two molt if it's a face card, and every face card played in the blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I don't know how to get all those jokers to show up. It's much harder in this game than I think a lot of other roguelikes for you to, you know, some, some roguelikes you can be like, all right, on the first level, I have to take let's slay the spires kind of like this i gotta get attacks and then as i go i gotta start deleting cards out of my deck so i can get good cards to show more more often and it's the same pattern and then i sort of change the strategy based on what i see um this one you kind of just like have to hope for the strategy you're going for to show up so i i think you're uh i think you're too you're being too rigid um you definitely can uh you know, uh, Spike Spiegel, you know, bend with the water uh, a little bit in, in sort of how it how it comes to you. Um, but it is, it does, you know, there is at some point, like, it, it may just be impossible for you to get like an endless scaling type run, right? Like ones that, you know, are capable of going to antes like 10, 11, 12, like that might just not be possible, right? Just based on what shows up. Yeah. But... You know, I, I think it definitely is possible to have a very successful run most of the time, probably. I haven't done almost any of the cards that have said, like, win a run I, without playing a, this or that or whatever. Yeah, some of those are really tough. And they're the, a really cool thing, which I don't know if you've unlocked yet, is they have challenge runs in this game. Did you even see these? Uh-uh, I have not. So I only unlocked them, like, after I beat several different runs with different decks and stuff but basically there's a there's a separate tab from the like when you hit new game you can tab over to challenges and it has a bunch of pre-made decks and pre-made starting conditions that you can play and try and win with oh i have to win with one more deck to unlock it and some of them are wild it's like this one starts you with um the ride the bus joker uh, which is it gets plus one molt for every time you play a hand that doesn't have a face card in it. And then it resets if you ever play a face card. 
And then it also has a, uh, I forget what the other Joker it has. It's like one of the ones, maybe one of the ones about straights or something that like lets you make straights by skipping numbers or something. And both <laughs> of them are eternal in that you can never sell them. They're stuck in your Joker set forever. That's fun. Yeah. Hmm. And so it gives you this like wild condition to play a game with where you're like, oh, I have to do, <laughs> I guess we're doing this strategy whether I want to or not. And, you know, it's a, you know, like the challenge run, basically. There's one where you don't earn any money during the, uh, after the ends of rounds, but you start with the egg jokers. Like, you think you have three oh. or four egg jokers? The egg jokers. Which gain so money, good. like gain yeah, sell every, value every, over time. Uh, every blind. Yeah. So you start with a few egg jokers and you can't earn money any other way, basically, right? Except for like other jokers or whatever you that get. That joker? You don't earn money normally. Is it the egg joker? It's one of the jokers that increases the sell value of every joker every round. Uh, That might be that one, actually. It's so good. Yeah. and then But you need it you because can... all you have is egg jokers. And so if you don't sell them for something, you have no money. <laughs> you start to get enough money, you can keep pulling the joker that copies the joker to the right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And keep like looping that and getting more money. The copy the joker to the right can actually be re really good. Oh, I, I think, the, are you thinking of Blueprint? I think Blueprint is one of the best jokers in the game. Yeah, when like you combine down. it with some of those spectral cards of like, also copy a joke, you know what I mean? Like so so I want to know, have you seen a legendary joker? Uh I have one legendary joker. Uh okay. I, I, game. I don't they all have like weird do. names. Um yeah. they're on the last page of the Joker inventory if you're looking for them. You get I've them out of seen um, out of a specific spectral a card. Spectral card, yeah. That sh that shows up sometimes not in spectral card packs too, by the way. Uh I found it in an Arcana pack once. Um hmm. But I will tell you, I've only ever seen it twice in the entire time I've played the game. I only have two of them, and I know there are it's, more. It's funny, because I thought once you unlocked a legendary Joker, I thought they were supposed to show up more often. No, I think you can only get them from that Spectral card. I think it's the only way to oh, get legendary Jokers. God. But their powers are cool. I had one that just disables all bosses. That seems broken. It's just like, yeah, you just don't have a boss. It's just a normal round now. <laughs> Uh, which is kind of wild, um, but it doesn't doesn't do anything else. It just sits there and does that. <laughs> you know, I won that round, but I didn't get very far in endless. So yeah, I, I, very cool. Um, big fan, man. It's such an easy way to just like memory hole a bunch of time. <laughs> I I honestly like play so many and then I forget. I get so invested in some of them too. It's like you've built up this like intricate pattern of stuff and it feels like the game is thinking and like knows and you're like, oh, oh, yeah. I have my, I have my deck. I'm ready. Like all these multipliers are, are popping off. Everything is good. And it's like this boss flips all your jokers face down and shuffles the order. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a B. All my combos yeah. won't work. I think the biggest thing for me is like when you run into the, the dude that, delivers stuff face down and you're just like i don't know how to beat. i don't know how to beat this i it's I so guess. funny though like you can hard counter that boss by basically playing like builds that only depend on like like the two pair build no problem with that one right <laughs> it's just like oh just play some other two pair who cares about those face down ones just discard them you're hmm. gonna make a two pair it's no problem and then it's just like whatever so like you have to play small hands but if you're playing stuff like straights full houses flushes or whatever you're hosed yeah <laughs> that boss screws you so hard the flushes is how I won my first game, and now I want to do them all the time. You know what's really funny about flushes? I I love playing a flush. Like it's so it's so fun. It's one. Of, it's a great feeling, right? I think there's like a subtle bias against flushes. <laughs> oh, really? Especially because it, it just in like what jokers exist, or at least the ones I've seen. Because I think the ones that support flushes don't have as good multipliers on them. Like you can get more points by doing straights and full houses mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, full house is a high, higher level hand anyway, right? But I feel like there's more support for like straights and stuff than there is for, for flushes. 
which then is is interesting because some of those decks like straight up give you basically a flush every hand. Like when you play the the deck that only has two <laughs> suits in it, it's like all di- all diamonds and all spades or whatever. You, every hand is a flush. Like it's the easiest possible thing to make every hand. Yeah, yeah. The, and then the difficulty you get the Joker, in that. One. Then you get the Joker that adds however many times you've been, you've played the card to the multiplier of the card. Oh, love that Joker. The the uh, the supernova or whatever it is. I think that's supernova. Mm. I love that one. Mm. The, the problem with those flush ones is like that deck runs out of steam in like anti six, seven, and eight. Like, yeah, if you got the supernova early, you might be okay. But like, it, you hit the like high antis and you're like, okay, I need like I need more juice. <laughs> it's not <laughs> doing it, you know? Yeah. What a game. What a game, right? Uh, all right, we're, we're we're ramping down here real quick, but uh, Andy, is Micro Center still doing it for you? <laughs> I wanted to ask how long it had been since you guys have been into Micro Center, especially Michael, because I know Michael you frequented Micro Center quite a bit. Ooh, and it would have been. You, uh, I was going to say it would have been when I built this computer. Um we've been in the mechanical keyboard game quite a while. I was trying to teach someone some stuff about mechanical keyboards. And the first thing that popped into my head was like, well, then you should try a bunch. I wonder if Micro Center has a bunch of them out. And it turns out, I think they make a lot of their money on peripherals. So they have basically every keycap out. You can go try them all. Uh, That's so smart. That's very cool. And I, yeah, there's some, there's some pretty good ones out there. I'm, I, I might go back for me, to be honest. Um, I'm pretty pretty happy with my silvers having tested a bunch of them. I'm not sure that I would want clicky. I definitely don't want clicky. Uh, considering what I heard there, but Micro Center's kind of like really reorganized themselves into a half Best Buy, half PC building area, like built thing. Like half the building looks exactly like a Best Buy. The other half is just PC parts, just PC parts everywhere huge racks of cases on display huge cases for graphics cards that are actually now full and buddy when i saw the prices on a 4080 super i thought to myself one that's cheaper than my 3080 ti was and two should i buy it (laughs) andy no bad (laughs) i'm gonna hit you with this newspaper bad I mean, the prices are pretty good. I just have to say, you know, it's good to hear that sanity has returned. Yeah, and it's it's nice to see Micro Center with a big store like that and competing on price. You know, I did the obligatory Amazon check and it was like, well, that's a hundred dollars cheaper than Amazon. Yeah. So you guys don't realize how good you have it. There's no Micro Centers near. They had and they had seventy eight hundred to me. Seventy eight hundred. Seventy eight hundred X three Ds. For like forty percent off, pretty crazy. Man, that's a that's yeah. a good deal. I mean, it's a good deal if you're ready to build a computer. Uh, you know, especially with the like the upgrade to Zen. What is it? Five uh, AM five or whatever the new socket is. Yeah, the new socket. Yep. And faster DDR. I want to build a new PC. I don't want one. I do. I do want one. I don't want one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, fortunately, it's going to be a few years, I think, for me. But, Same. but they had they had a lot of keyboards. So if you're out in the market for uh, a keyboard and you're thinking about it, even like trying trying to understand what dome switches are, they have those out there, the cheapo ones. They have scissor switches out there. They have the Razer uh, proprietary keycaps out there. They got all the cherry keycaps out there. They got Build your own keyboard sets with just the anodized aluminum bases, and you put in all the PCB and the switches and everything else. They got everything. Crazy. It's cool. I'm I'm happy to see like people building their own keyboards as like a hobbyist thing. That's that's very cool. Oh, there's a big big community for that. Yeah, Micro Center still kicking it. Much better than during the shortages. They they look like a full store. And very busy, very, very busy. Yeah, well, I bounce back. 
as uh, as I mentioned, they don't have many of those stores, and uh, that's why they're so busy because they are clearly killing it, and there just aren't so many of them, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, Michael, if people want to get at us about how good the micro center near them is, how could they do that? They could send us an email to podcast at we were gamers. Let us know how well stocked your micro center is. Which like, most of these people will be writing in about the micro center near you guys because I think that's the closest one to a lot of people. Or the lack <laughs> of micro center near them. Yeah, yeah. They can also find us on social medias and they can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at we were gamers. JJ, it is luminous. Luminous. Okay. Question answered. <laughs>